Your metal clay pieces have been fired. Now what? I'm Karen and I'm at the Cool Tool Studio today to talk about some methods for polishing your precious metal clay pieces. There is a wide variety of ways that you can polish your precious metal clay pieces once they have been fired. Today I'm going to be covering a few of my favorites starting with this flash shiner. If you're just getting started with precious metal clay, this is one of my favorite and most accessible ways to polish precious metal clay once it's been fired. It has two sides to it and you start off with the green and you just kind of drag it across the surface of your fired piece. And this green side is gonna create kind of a matte finish that I actually really enjoy. And for some of your pieces, you might decide to leave it at that. Or you can follow it up with this white side. And that's gonna bring things up to a really nice high polish. You can see that surface really shining up. Um, one of the disadvantages to using this technique is that it is kind of flat and very structured, so it doesn't have a lot of flexibility to get into those low areas. So if you're doing a piece where you've added patina and you want like a lot of high contrast, this is a great option. And it is a really accessible way to get a beautiful high polish. If you are wanting to get into those low areas, another very accessible way of polishing your pieces is by using these steel scratch brushes. And they have some more flexibility, so they do get into the lower areas. And you just kind of add some pressure and push across your piece. Some people use them by dragging back and forth. Um, I find that over time that kind of sends the bristles in every direction, it makes them less effective. So I like to just use them in one direction and rotate my piece. I feel like the shine that you get from this isn't quite as high of a shine as you can achieve with the flash shiner, but I do like that it helps you get into those low areas. So this is another great option. See, that looks really nice. It's kind of more of a satin finish, but if you did use this and we're hoping to get more of a high polish on those high areas only, then you could come in with the flash shiner and use them together if you would like. So then those top areas are shining up really nicely. So the flash shiner and steel scratch brush are two really beginner friendly options, but if you've been working with metal clay for a while and are ready to invest in your practice, a tumbler is so worth it. Um, you can really quickly achieve a beautiful high polish and you don't have to do any work really. Um, what a tumbler is, is it's a machine that rotates your work inside of this drum. And inside the drum um, is a tumbling media. And for tumbling jewelry, steel shot is the most commonly used tumbling media. And as you can see, it has lots of different shapes, like this little tiny point will get into small low areas. And what happens is when your work is in there and the tumbler rotates, these steel shots will rub across your pieces, creating a burnishing action and bring them up into a beautiful high shine. So I like to pour this solution into a gallon jug and then fill it the rest of the way up with water. And then you take that water burnishing compound mixture and you pour it over your shot until the level of your shot is just covered and that's going to help lubricate your shot as it moves across your work and create a nice burnishing action to really bring your pieces up to a lovely shine. These tumblers work best when they're used alongside a burnishing compound and you're meant to use this burnishing compound diluted um, otherwise it could lead to a degradation in the quality of the rubber of your barrel here. Once you have your diluted burnishing solution and your pieces in your tumbler you're ready to put the lid back on and then you're ready to tumble your work. When I'm tumbling, depending on the level of shine that I'm trying to achieve, I usually tumble my work anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes. Before I load these up on a mandrel, let's take a moment to talk about the different radial bristle discs that are available to you. There are abrasives, and that runs from the 80 grit to the 400 grit. And then there's pumice, which kind of lives in a realm of its own. Some people call it a pre-polish. Um, if you use this on your silver pieces, it'll give them a really nice kind of matte sheen um, but it won't really be like a high polish. 
And lastly, there are these peach and green ones, and these are great for polishing and bringing your work up to a nice high shine. So these radial bristle discs are used alongside this mandrel, and it's got a screw top here that you just unscrew, and then you load these bristle discs onto the screw there. Um, something important to note is that they need to face the right direction. The bristles need to be facing clockwise. Um, if you were to load them up this way, when it spins, all these little bristles are going to get caught and it's going to push them back and they're going to go every which way and not really be effective. So we're going to face the bristles clockwise and I usually load anywhere from four to six onto this little screw here. Um, if you're doing something really detailed and don't need many, you can go down to like three or so, but I find that if there's anything less than three, they're just also not very effective. So we're going to load four up there, and again, double check that they're clockwise, and just screw the mandrel back on. And now we're ready to go. So to use these, I just like to run them across the surface of my work, and I like to rotate my work, so I'm polishing my piece from all angles. And. You can kind of see here, pink is pumice, so it's not like a brilliant shine, but it's kind of a matte shine. And after you're done with pink, you're going to work your way to peach, and then this kind of minty green. So I'm going to move it along, and we can take a look at it when it's done. All right, so I just wrapped this up with that green, and as you can see, it's got a really nice shine to it, and all your detail has been preserved. Again, this wasn't abrasive, so I didn't like remove any texture. I just brought things up to a nice polish. As a concluding note, when you're using your flexible shaft, don't forget to wear safety glasses and tie up any long hair. Also, if you do end up using an abrasive bristle brush, it's a good idea to wear a dusk mask. These are a few of my favorite methods for polishing precious metal clay pieces. Depending upon the tools you have access to, or the look that you're trying to achieve, some of these methods may serve you better than others, but I hope this video has given you a place to start. Thanks for watching.